was intense. All right. That's it. I'm done. That's all that's all we got. Bye folks. Okay. Hey, later. Um do it up, Lady Ada. What is this? Okay, so let's start off. Well, okay, you, you just ran in. And wait, hold on, I gotta go get my demos. Okay, so this is um, the papyrus hat fat from Pie Supply. Pie Supplies. <laughs> There's so many different pie named companies. And this is an e-ink um, fat, and it's just like it's so cute and lovely and exactly the right size. So I thought, okay, we gotta carry this. Um, and it comes with library code, so you can control it. You know, we stock a um, little, uh, these e-ink breakout boards from uh, Pervasive, but this is a way easier way to get it working on your Raspberry Pi. So can you go to the Overcast? I just want to show you the funniest part about having e-ink. So you, like, it's not plugged in, but it still has the logo. So you can draw images, text, you can make an e-book reader, whatever you want. And, of course, um, the best part is that you know, it doesn't use any power. So when you unplug it, it's still displayed or you can shut down the pie and then like restart it or, or whatever you want. Um, so it's a really sweet and easy way to have a uh, pervasive display, the ink display. So check that out. Um, right now we're only carrying this size, but if it's popular, people like it, we'll carry the other sizes. Maybe a hat version. Okay, next up. This is... Um, Red Bear. Yeah, so we have now the unsoldered version of the Red Bear IoT Fat. So this is also a Raspberry Pi Zero accessory. Um, this adds cellular and Bluetooth, sorry, sorry, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to um, your Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, so you don't have to have any USB devices or what, whatnot, and it's even FCC regulated, so that's, that's super sweet. They got FCC certification. Um, so that's the really cool part. Uh, and it now comes in a version without header. Some people were like, well, I want to make a very skinny version. I don't want to have to have two headers. I want to solder it directly. Um, so we have that now. So this okay. is a great way to add IoT capabilities to your um, Pi Zero. It uses SDIO, so it's very fast, very efficient. Built-in drivers and everything. Speaking of Internet of Things, we have the Particle I.O. Starter Pi Pack. Yes. So Particle, who is good friends of ours, we help them out with all sorts of stuff, and uh, we carry their goodies. Um, they have tr traditionally always had their little um, Wi-Fi boards, you know, based on the CC3000 mm -hmm. or then the, the, um, the Photon, which is based on the, uh, the Wicked chipset. But there's a lot of people who don't need a small portable device. They want a device that's easy to use and more powerful, like more, not easy to use, it's more powerful, can do more, has more pins, mm -hmm. can run displays or can, you know, run HDMI or, or have cellular or, or Wi-Fi, whatever. And so the Pi 3 is a really good IoT device because it has that Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, full computer, and it's about the same price as, as a Photon. Like they sell it mm -hmm. at the cost that it costs to make. Okay. So having a pack that will work with the new particle dashboard for Raspberry Pi, it makes a lot of sense. So um, you get a Raspberry Pi 3, you get a cobbler, you get a breadboard, you get some wires, you get all the goodies, and then some extras. They have a couple project packs. They have a projects that this pack will let you build, including an IR remote project, and um, like a push button project and some analog uh, digital input. So check it out. We made a special pack for them, and it's at a great price. So if you want to get started with Particle with Raspberry Pi, okay. you can basically program your Pi through the web on Arduino, basically Arduino like programming through the cloud, through the cloud and then deploy it to your Pi. So very interesting way to do it. I mean, like, why not? If you can, if you can do that to a small device, why not do it to a very powerful device? Mm. And you get all those benefits that the Pi has. Okay. So you're probably saying, oh, what's next? Okay, this. Oh, this is a little adapter board. We actually um, have had this for quite a while, but we've only used it in this kit, which is our HDMI uh, TFT display. And then we add this little widget in between that takes the 50 pin connector, converts it to 40 pin, and also um, adds a resistive touchscreen controller. Uh, there's a couple people who are like, well, I broke mine, or like I want to DIY something. And I was like, well, you know, fine, we'll put it in the store. It's, it's for advanced users only because, again, it doesn't come with the display driver and the, it's not calibrated. You'll have to calibrate the resistive touch screen. It's not hard. You have to run the little program and then just touch the screen in four points. But for the people who want that, uh, we have it. Okay. But wait, there's more. Light as a feather. It's a feather pin. This is, yeah, this is the um, 
this is funny because you know this is not doesn't actually exist. So you don't have this unless you subscribe to Ada Box 001. This is the feather pin that we released with that Ada Box, and every Ada Box is going to have a unique collectible. This is a collectible from the first one. Uh, maybe to make you feel bad, maybe to inspire you to subscribe to Ada Box Two or Ada Box Three. Uh, we have these in the store, so you can know what PID it is. I guess in case you want to collect them all and reference them by by product ID. Yeah, a lot of people do. Yeah. Yeah. But it's out of stock and will never be in stock. Whew. Or maybe. I don't know. It's, maybe it'll be. It's not. It's out yet. Don't, it's out. Don't ask. Okay. No, this is out. This is out. No, I know. I was talking about the pen. Okay, what's this? Okay, this is the new product for the week that we made. Um, this is the VL53 LOX Time of Flight Distance Sensor. Um, this sensor is from ST. It's really interesting. Came out a couple months ago. Uh, finally wrapped up the library and breakout board for it. It is a sensor that uses a for lack of a better term, micro LIDAR. It's a very small laser diode. And it, from what I can tell, bounces light off of things and then measures the reflection and the, um, the, the light, uh, the delta in the, the wave form that's reflected and uses that to determine how far something is. So it's not measuring the amount of light, it's measuring um, the like, the, you know, the wave, if it's coherent, it's all, all the photons are at the same wave length and the same, like, wave I just form. need a demo or something to Well, I'll do a demo, it. but basically it's an interesting sensor because instead of sonar, which bounces ultrasonic off, and instead of IR straight-up sensors, which usually just look for the amount of light bounced off and use that to approximate it, this is actually doing it a more precise and extremely narrow... Uh, field of view sense, which is really good because a lot of times you want to measure exactly in front of you. You don't want to measure like over here, over here, over here. You want to measure right in front of you for, you know, robotics or um, motion sensing. And so this is a sensor that can do 30 millimeters to up to two meters if you're in a long range mode. For standard range mode, it's about one meter. Long range, you can go two meters, but you lose accuracy and precision. Yeah, sure. Most people will probably use it in the 30 millimeter to one meter range. But it's extremely responsive. It takes about 50 milliseconds to do a reading. Um, it's very accurate and very precise. Only about 5% off. And it doesn't have the, the uh, issue where if you're too close. Like some IR sensors, it can't tell if you're very far or very close mm -hmm. because of the lensing, um, the sharp distance sensors. And um, it's very affordable compared to most LIDARs. And uh, it's small, easy to use. We put on a breakout with 5-volt uh, level shifting because it's a 2.8-volt device. And uh, I've got a demo. I was going to say, there's a lot of talking, but not a lot of demo. Sheesh. Okay. So this is my... Don't, don't get all huffy. Because of my demo. Get my demo going. Yeah. It's about what? time. Shh. Shh. Um, so this is my feather. I just have a feather uh, down here with like an old battery. And then I have an OLED. Uh, and it's just displaying. If it doesn't display anything, that means it doesn't sense anything. And um, this is that sensor. And so when I put my hand over it, it's measuring the distance. And what's really cool is if I move my hand even a little bit, here actually I'll, I'll move closer to the camera so you can see my hand as it rises up. So as my hand rises, you can see it's measuring, measuring, and you know, it has quite a range. Um, most IR distance sensors do not go this far, or like if they do, they, they, they stop being accurate. Um, another nice thing is if I move my hand off even a little bit like it, if it's not right in front again that very narrow you know quarter sized what hey what going down here it's like a you know a quarter sized field of view so you have to be right in the right location there you go and then yeah so you can rise up rise down um very responsive very easy to use it's just i squared c and um you need to use their api which is you know kind of a kind of a nutty API, but we wrote a wrapper for Arduino. And so it works with any Arduino or Arduino compatible, um, just over I squared C. And uh, I think really great for robotics or um, if you wanted to do, you know, like, um, I always talked about doing like a, a laser harp type thing. But the problem is it's, it's, it's hard to get sensors that are so narrow that you can have 12 of them in a row and not have them interfere unless you're like yeah. purposefully turning them on and off. Um, what's nice about this is, you know, stick this behind I squared C multiplexer or two, and you can get 16 of these very precise 
um, spot yeah. detection. That's cool. Yeah. So I kind of like. Is this. there any way that you could like see it? Like, could you can you fill the room with smoke, or like, is there any way that you could see the light? It's there, it's 940 any... nanometers, so you're not going to see it. Um, but that's good because it means it's it's not visible, and uh, you know it's it, it's not IR the same way that most IR like an IR LED. But I think something in the data sheet, and it's not, the data sheet's a little like not super comprehensive, but I think if you have a lot of IR in the room, it can confuse it. So you oh, okay. want to not have a lot of IR. So it might be possible if you can see IR that you can see this? Yes, okay, if you great. can see IR. Can okay. you see IR? Um, I don't, sometimes. Okay, anyways, so what's cool is, you know, if you put this on a rotating um, servo, you know, you can, you can sense a pretty, you know, you can do a, not an, a map. I wouldn't say like a, a pure mapping, like a like a connect yeah. type. But you could sort of <laughs> see like what's going on in your robot location and stuff. So I think that this would be a good sensor for that. And again, because it has such a long range and a narrow field of view, that yeah. it, it's good for sweeping because you'll know that you're only sweeping whatever you're pointing at is what you're measuring. Okay. So with that, Lady Ada, is you guessed it. Products. Did it. Congratulations.